Cobalt version 8 includes the EOS Magic Sheet engine. This takes the place of the older channel layout object. Both a magic sheet and a channel layout are topographical views that you can design to show the lighting system or recording targets of your show in a customized way. They are interactive and can be used to select channels or groups, apply palettes, display channel information, and other purposes. This short video will cover the basics of how to use magic sheet tools in version 8, how to create magic sheets, and how to create image effect layouts. The best way to learn how to make magic sheets, however, is to jump in and play. I have a show file where I had some existing magic sheets already created. Technically, they were channel layouts because this is a pre-version 8 show file I'm starting with. And this is to show you that in older shows where you have those channel layouts, they will be automatically brought in as the new magic sheet object. And you get to them pretty much exactly the same way as you did before by using number and format on a channel view. So this magic sheet contains a lot of objects that were translated from the old magic sheet and some items that I've adjusted already for this video. The gradient background, for example, that you see, that's a function of the new magic sheet engine, as is some new handling for how the channel icons work. And we'll show you that here shortly. But in this particular layout, you can see the reasonably old style park hands and moving lights. And these icons look very similar to an older Cobalt version 7 or before file. You can also see group buttons in this particular view, and those behave exactly as you would expect to select groups of channels. All of these objects are customizable in the new engine, and that's what makes the new Magic Sheet engine exceptionally cool. One big change is that the new Magic Sheet engine allows you to edit Magic Sheets right in the view you're currently in. So you don't have to go into a separate editor to work with these. Every Magic Sheet has this arrow button on the right hand side, and by tapping that you open up the tools that allow you to make adjustments to each of your icons, to bring new icons in, to draw new objects, import photos, change background colors, change fields, change target types, and so on and so forth. Because this engine comes directly from the EOS software, it does not actually connect up with your Cobalt face panel keys. You will need a mouse or a touch screen and an external keyboard in order to interact with these tools. When the Magic Sheet is in editing mode, you'll see a couple things. You'll likely see a grid. The grid can actually be turned off in the cursor menu. So if I turn the grid off, those dots disappear. Turn it back on, the dots reappear. When the grid is enabled, objects will snap to the grid. When the grid is disabled, you can move them around more freely. The other thing you'll see is that instead of seeing uh, just the channel number and the fields that are available, as you see in the old style icons here that were imported from the old show file, you'll also see other indications of fields that are available. In this case, on the adjusted icons, I've added the fixture type so I can see more clearly what kind of a moving light that is. All of this targeting and field information is indicated here in the bottom half of the tool set. So if I select this light, scroll back up, all of a sudden you see that we have an intensity field which is indicated by the full, the target ID, which is the channel number. And I could add in, as we had before, another field for fixture type. And now you can see that icon is showing similar information to the one next to it. You also see some handles on the icon that allows me to rotate the fixture. I'll do this with the mouse just for clarity. So rotate the fixture. So I can straighten him out and I can actually resize that fixture to ridiculous proportions or miniature as I wish by using these two handles. I don't actually need a mouse if I have a touch screen. I can in fact grab those points with my finger and work with them that way as well. I can also do some things to the colors on this particular icon or any selected icon. I can change the line weight of the outline if I wish. I can change the color of the outline if I wish. And just so you notice, I can change to many different colors by changing the brightness or by entering RGB values 
however I wish to work with it. I could also link the outline to the channel color in a color mixing system or the channel's intensity. I don't typically do this on outlines, but you can, of course, if that makes sense to the, for the object you've selected. I typically do this on the fill color, and that's what's been done to these other items uh, to the left. I could also change its icon. There are a number of icons here available, mostly in this particular view, it's mostly shapes. The channel box is in there as well. We also have then fixture icons, both from the EOS engine and ones that match the older channel layouts, uh, like the old house light indicator there, um, so that your channel layouts will come in just fine when you import them. There are a couple items of note, and that is the media server icon. This is a special icon uh, for media server objects. And next to it, there's a pixel grid icon, and that is what we use to create image effect layouts now. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So I've just changed this object for my imported channel layout. If I don't like the background colors in this particular channel layout, I can come in here and change, for example, to a solid background, and I can change the color of that background to something far less uh, obnoxious if I wish. Or I can pick gradient as I had before. And now you'll see I have a top color and a bottom color that I can choose with those color pickers in order to figure out exactly what kind of a look I'd like to have behind that magic sheet. You could also pick an image and place a full image behind this magic sheet if you wish and change aspects of that in this particular menu. I'll talk about importing images in a moment. So we'll put this back to something less obnoxious and close that. And you can see I can pinch zoom just as before. I can pan uh, the view around just as before. I wanna show you what these fixtures are doing right now. So you can see here that these channels are spot 2500s. So if I select a couple of lights that we can see, and turn them on. As I bring the intensity up and down, you can see that the fill color is showing me that they're coming on in white as opposed to the neighbors over here, which are off. Therefore, they're shown in black. And if I pick a color palette for them, you can see now those lights are showing that blue color and the intensity as the fill color. So I know when those lights come on, they're going to be blue. This might be one of those cases where you want the outline to show you what the color of the light is, but maybe the fill color is showing you the intensity so you have a preview of uh, what's going to happen when you turn the lights on, or vice versa. Uh, as I said, it's totally up to you how you want to play with those things. So here's a pretty complex magic sheet. We can also start from scratch by inserting a new one. In the older system, you would have to go in and find the list of channel layouts, which was under the channels object or channels item in the browser. They are now known as magic sheets. You would have to find this list and insert a new channel layout into this list and then go into the editor to create these magic sheets. We don't actually have to do that anymore. I'll come back to this item in a moment, but what I can do now, if I pick a number for one that doesn't exist and hit format, it's going to create this magic sheet for me. Uh, so I'll just call it new magic sheets. So we remember later on what it's called. It carries that number forward into the list so I can still use those numbers to jump around, right? One format takes me back to my first one, 11 format takes me back to this new one. And instead of having to go into that separate editor, remember we just opened the tools and now you're in editing mode. And now you can drag items into your magic sheet and start creating stuff. And you notice they do come in reasonably small. So remember pinch zoom to make things bigger. These objects in this particular menu assume that you're bringing in a channel because they look like lighting fixtures. So they have a default target type. Typically, the system will start with channel one, but you can always change that to something else. And remember to use the external keyboard and not the internal keyboard. So I can say that should be channel 11. And that's that. And then you can carry on making adjustments to the colors, the fonts, the colors of the fonts, the placements of the fields, 
what additional fields you want to show, and so on. There are tools up above to create an array, which we'll show you when I talk about the pixel mapping function, uh, how to align multiple objects so that they are nice and tidy on your screen. You can distribute channels uh, from the first of a selection to the last of a selection, either horizontally or vertically. Uh, you can also distribute rotation. So if you've got them spun at a specific angle, you can distribute that across selected channels as well. So all those tools are in here. You can also zoom around your magic sheet using the zoom tools in the toolbox here. Lastly, if you have multiple items, you can group them and arrange them in stacks on your magic sheet to create that image as you choose to have it. So if you import an image, for example, and it sits on top of your device icons, that's not going to be so helpful. So you can send that image backwards, or you can send those fixture icons forwards uh, so they sit on top of the image, that sort of thing. Grouped items will be selected together and adjusted together. Those are the tools at the top. So we inserted this one. I was going to go back to this list. This list still exists. And you can see now all of the magic sheets that are in this list. If I want to open the list, I can. This is where I would set the old auto selectable toggle if that's something I want to use. That means if I select a channel that's not currently displayed on the current magic sheet, it will show me the lowest numbered magic sheet that does have that channel on it. Uh, if I want to delete a magic sheet, I would do it from this list just like that. 